Chris, I was just curious, how much, how involved did you get in terms of breaking down the, the Cal-Texas game? And maybe other than their offensive balance, what, what did you see that Texas did well to kind of exploit Cal's defense? Um, well, I think the quarterback hurt them with their feet, which really didn't have much to do with us. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, that was probably one of the big things. Um, I think, uh, you know, they did a good job executing their offense a little bit. But, uh, you know, there's nothing tougher than a scrambling quarterback. And there was a lot of that going on. Cal's defense overall, though, yeah, much better this year. Are they schematically doing much different than last year? Is it just guys being more experienced? I think, I think it's a combination of guys being experienced. I think they're healthier than they had been. You know, I think, I think even when we played them earlier in the year, they had some health issues. So I think it's year two in that scheme, and everybody looks better. Do you, do you still, you know, even though it's week four, do you still kind of, with an eye toward the full season, looking to, I don't know whether it's shorten practices or do some things to try to keep guys fresh and keep guys yeah. going? Yeah, that's a, that's a big topic that we're, we're always into. Um, and we kind of have our monthly plan. We do. We kind of break the season down into probably thirds. And, uh, you know, the first, the first third of the season to us is going through this game, and then we have a bye, and we kind of make our plan from there, play the next third make another plan from there. And so a lot of it has to do with the health of your team, but we, we still kind of know how it goes during the year, even if you stay healthy in terms of trying to keep guys fresh. Is it because you have the bye, does that allow you to kind of maybe go maybe a little bit more gung-ho than if you had a game maybe the following week? Um, not necessarily. Uh, you know, this, this early in the season with all of our new guys, we, we have to practice. I mean, we have to practice hard. We have to get the reps. This team's just not experienced enough to, to back off. And, uh, you know, what we have to do as we go forward is learn, even if we take some pads off or if we shorten practice, the time that we're out there, we have to go really fast and we have to try to build skill. And that's really hard for uh, most guys, let alone young and experienced guys. With all those young guys, I mean, do you notice, is there a different feel out there in practice than there was even three weeks ago going into the opener and just, I don't know, a comfort level, a confidence level, you know, those guys having been through a few games now. Yeah, I think there's, I think, uh, I think there's some uh, familiarity with some of our plays that three weeks ago, uh, you know, I know Trey Adams didn't know some of these plays, didn't know them, let alone can he execute his, you know, his assignment in detail. And so there's some of that. But, you know, the nice thing is, I think these guys, they, they, they know, they're hungry. I mean, <laughs> we're so far from anybody having this figured out, that they, they practice with good urgency. Do you feel like from your perspective, from the coaching perspective, there's, there's more you know, familiarity, obviously, but you feel you have a better grasp of who these guys are, what they can do, and what they can handle? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, but I do think that um, you know, the one thing we know is we're, we're still going to make some mistakes. You know, I think everybody makes mistakes. And we're still young enough that we're going to make mistakes. But... Um, you know, I think the, our coaches have done a good job of, like, w we don't cater down to, to young guys. You know, these this are the plays we're running, and these are the standards we have, <laughs> and we got to get them right. And so I think the kids feel that urgency out there. Chris, I think a lot of people are looking at this game um, against Cal and seeing, all right, this, this is the litmus test to see uh, whether the Huskies are, are for real or not. Yeah. Do you – are you looking at not if you're guys for real or not, but are you looking at this as, as a test to see – you know, what you guys got. Are you curious to see how you, how you match up against a team like that? Every week is the same It's thing. no different. It is no different. Okay. It's about us and how we improved. We may have a better opponent, but it's still about us. And the next week, it's going to be about us in the bye week. And then the next opponent that we play, it's always right. about us. I was going to ask the same thing about defense going up against Goff. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, he's obviously an elite guy. Do you, do you feel the same way about that, or is that a little bit different, the fact that he's so good? I think we have a new challenge. Okay because we haven't seen anybody throw the ball like this. This is what they do, and he's as good as anybody out there. So we have a humongous challenge for sure. Um, but it still comes back to us. I mean, we're going to put the tape on and say, do we execute our assignment, or did they execute theirs better than us? And at first, you know, one, we got to get lined up right. Two, we got to use our techniques. And, and, and three, then we look, did they just do it better than us? I think the thing is coaches that you get, you know, really um, – the we're all ears and eyes about is, are we doing what we're coached to do? Mm -hmm. And if we are, and somebody can out-execute us, then you tip your hat, you go back to practice and try to build more skills. How similar is what Dykes is doing down there to 
to what Leach is doing or what Wazoo and, and are there noticeable? Oh, I think it's much so different. Is it? You know, um, I, I, I think, uh, you know, it, it all comes out of that school, right. but I think it's much different. I mean, these guys run the ball for 200 yards a game. I mean, and they got some running backs that can really go. I mean, they, they like to run the ball. So they got a nice blend. I mean, and if they keep you two dimensional, uh, which this team has been able to do, that's hard. It's hard playing defense. You mentioned Trey maybe three weeks ago. There were some plays he didn't know. In that time, what I guess what's he done to to allow him to be on the field for sixty some snaps and start a game and rely on him that way? Learn the plays better. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean to sound like a, a smart aleck here, but that's really what it is. Is that just dedication to the film room or yeah. working with coaches or? It's all that. You know, you just can't. I mean, there's just a, there's a lot, and I always say that this. O line position is really complicated. I mean, it really is. I mean, as soon as they change the front, as soon as they change the blitz, um, you know, you have how many calls in a, in a game. Um, you multiply that by the looks you can get, you know, and there's a lot on a new guy's plate. And so that's why I say, I mean, you got you to gotta learn the plays, and that's, that's no easy task being here, you know, for a month or so. As you guys sit down to evaluate, let's say, pass protection, is there a metric that you're using that you're charting, you know, okay, this was a hit, this was a hurry, this was this, was this or is it just based on kind of what you see, your evaluation of how those um, guys did it? Uh, every rep is graded by every coach. It's color-coded, it's graded, it's numerical. I mean, it's over the top. And so then we just try to, to uh, you know, keep it simple for our guys, whether it was good enough or not good enough. If their game grade was good enough or not good enough. And, uh, you know, sometimes, I mean, again, stats and grades and all that, you, you can get too hung up in that. Are we progressing? Are we learning? I mean, it really comes back to that. Because a lot of times the young guys, you know, if you just give them that grade and you play 60, 70 snaps and you're grading everyone in that type of detail, it's not going to be good enough. But actually, when you look at the big picture, hey, it is good enough. We're making progress. You made some really good plays that you didn't make the week before. And I think that's how we look at it. Because when you, when you talk about the stats, it seems notable that through the three games compared to last year, you guys have literally cut your penalties and yardage down in half. Other than obviously playing cleaner, is there anything that you guys as a staff infer with that? And, and does it have to do with details? And does it, I mean, where do you go with something like that? You know, that's a, yeah, I think all that. Um, I think the, the big thing is, I think last year, you know, the kids, you know, we try to get them to play very aggressive. And there's certain penalties, they're going to happen. You're going to get a handful of penalties every game, and that's just how it goes. If a guy's having a repeated penalty, you know, a holding call or something like that, I mean, that's something we've got to really pay attention to. Every now and again, there's going to be a holding penalty. The ones that are, are frustrating are, you know, what we would call the football intelligence penalties. I mean, you know they're going to try to protect the quarterback. You know they're going to try to protect the guy going out of bounds. You know, sportsmanship and those type of things, you know they're going to be all over that. I mean, those, those are, can be very frustrating. And so I think we've made some strides there. I think our guys are getting that. Um, you know, targeting is another one that always shows up because that's a fine line. I mean, I, I've seen some kids get thrown out of games that you're going, that's hard. Because he's, they're trying to strike zone, to strike zone changes to the last second, and, you know, and he hits them in the head. They're taking that shot out of the game, the game which they should. So there's certain penalties. It's just like it's part of the game. You're going to get those when you play this fast and this physical. But I think we talk about them. We pay attention to them. We emphasize them in practice. We have officials of practice. So hopefully we're making progress. Presumably no update on Buddha. Everybody, except for Austin Joyner, it's week to week. Uh, you feel comfortable with the depth back there? Obviously, JoJo McIntosh got a lot of playing time last week. Brandon Beaver, the big play. I, I don't, you know, I think all those guys have been doing great. And we, we love these young guys. Um, you know, I think as you get on in the season, I think every, I don't know if, there, there's probably, we're still early in the season, there's probably, you know, a handful of teams that go, I really like our depth right now. <laughs> you know, I think most say, God, I wish we had more, more guys. I think this keeps coming back to me. I mean, we're so early in the season, and to me, it still keeps coming back to five years of eligibility. I still want somebody to present to us, like, why five years is not a good thing. Because you talk to us in the, net, in the last third of our season, that every coach in America, those kids that they're ready, they wouldn't like to throw some kids on a kickoff team or a special team or – hey, it's time for you to go at running back, and even though we're rich, you know, I mean, it just, you talk about athlete welfare, I think that is. By then, they're ready to go, and we didn't, you know, burn somebody's year super, super late in the year, and so, yeah.
that's my, I'm on my own. <laughs> oh, it's funny because I think there's also a, an opinion out there where people are talking about like a red shirt academic type right. situation. Yeah. Well, where do you fall in as far as So, that? you know, and, and I think, you know, this next year, if a kid doesn't have a high enough grade point, they're going to have to go ahead and red shirt. And, and, and I get that. <clears throat> and so that's fine. But, you know, I think that's going to be few and far between for us. That kid's not going to have a great, and so let's make sure the academics but are taken care of. But for the rest of the guys, what, why can't you know? Why can't they have another year? And if they're super good and they leave in three years, they're going to leave in three years anyways. And if not, and they can stay the fifth year, it's going to help them get closer to that degree. If you played them in, a, you know, as a true freshman, now it's harder to get that degree by the end of their senior year, and they're off trying to play pro football, and then that degree's hanging out. I mean, there's just. I think there's a lot of reasons where it would be good if there was a fifth year for these kids. And do you feel like that change is going to have to happen down the road eventually just because there's so many true freshmen that are making such an impact nowadays? I would hope that people would pay attention to that. I just don't think people do. I, I know that, you know, our, our longtime AD, Gene Blamer, who's at San Jose State now, he, he'd been on that for 20-some years. That, and every time you present to somebody, it's like, yeah, that, that, that's a good idea. And I think the more true freshmen that are playing – the more that you probably like, well, they're not all going to leave to go to the NFL, you know, so, so why wouldn't you give them that extra year and keep them excited about being in football and get them, and get them that degree? Chris, do you have any hopes or expectations from the fans on Saturday? Tennis, it's a little, it's a little low since Utah State. You know, I think, I think this thing is marketed as the greatest setting in college football, and it's not because of just where it sits. Mm -hmm. It's when that place is packed. And, and, and out there watching a great college football game, I think that's what makes it. And so we're always hopeful that, you know, everybody will show up and come out and there's some really good football players that are going to play on Saturday. And we're excited for our students to get back to help that, help those numbers as well.